Please don't forget, you might see the question now what is the magnitude of unit vector in the direction this? So anytime you see this, you don't need to find the uh, unit vector again. So you are asked to find the magnitude of the unit vector. So if you want to find, you look for the unit vector, then take the ma magnitude of the unit vector. No, it will waste your time. Just know that magnitude of any vector, any unit vector, is equal to 1. Any unit vector, it will give you 1. So the solution, I have A here, equal to 4i plus TVJ. 4i plus TVJ. So, will give me plus 0.6j. So, in your option, you might see this, you might see this, you might see this. So, you can see both. So, in a situation whereby you see this and this, go for this. If you see this in your option, if you see this in your option, and you see this in your option, go for the last one. Do you understand it? So, this is how to calculate the unit vector of any vector. What is the magnitude of this vector? So you should know the answer that the magnitude of this vector is square root of 15. So how is this square root of 15? So this is what you will do. Is this square root of 15? No. So let's do it. 3 square 9 plus 4 2 square which is 4. 9 plus 4 is 9 plus 4 is 13 plus 1 square, which is 1, that is 14. It means the magnitude of this vector is 14. How do I get 14? And I said in the exam hall, you don't need to solve. Just take your calculator. Just press 3 square plus 2 square plus 1 square. It will give you 14. Then square root of 14 we give you square root of 14 or you get 3.742. The direction cosine of the vector can be determined by dividing the corresponding coordinates of a vector by the vector length. By dividing the corresponding coordinates, this for i, that's x axis, j, y axis, c, that's z axis. So when you take the corresponding coordinates and you divide it by the magnitude of the vector, you will get the direction cosine. So from unit vector, we can get the direction cosine. And using this definition, we can also get the direction cosine. But um, sometimes, you'll be asked to find the direction cosine for x, y, and z as it. So I would prefer you make use of this unit vector method. Find the direction cosine and the direction angle of the vector 0, 5, 2. 0, 5, 2. So since this is a vector representation, so you can decide to write it out fully or you can decide to use this parent tenses. So in a situation whereby you see something like this, it's the same thing as this guy here. This equal to, that's um, 5j plus 2k. So this is the same thing as this. You know, this is zero, so we cannot... So we've been able to calculate the direction cosine.
Find the polar coordinates of the point A, point A. That is, point A is minus 4, comma, 4. They have to find the polar coordinates. That is, transform this Cartesian coordinates to a polar coordinate. And I said in the previous video that a polar coordinate, a polar coordinate um, makes use of a Cartesian coordinate makes use of x comma. The polar coordinate is 4 root 2, 135 degree. 4 root 2, 135 degree. Or root 32, 135 degree. Don't forget, in the previous video, I said polar coordinate is R, theta. R is 4 root 2, and theta is 135 degree. Okay, this uh, is the question. Given that point P, X, that's point P, X, comma, Y, divides the segment of the line A, that's line of the, of the line from point A, which is 6, comma, 8, to point B, which is 16, comma, minus 12, in the ratio AP, ratio PB, which is equal to 3, ratio 7. Find the coordinate of P. Find the coordinate of P. And here you can easily make sure the calculator to get the answer with the application of this formula. So I will solve it, then you make sure of your calculator to get the answer. Because in the exam world, you will make sure of your calculator instead of you solving on the paper. So um, let's start. Solution. is equal to 9,9.2 .9 or 9 over 1 over 5. So that is the coordinate of point P. So that's about how to calculate the, um, the division, um, the midpoint of the line of a point dividing a line into ratio, that, into ratio, that is into two unequal parts. And mind you, in some questions, you might be giving this point, this point, and you have to calculate this point. So you will make it of the same formula and just make x1 the subject of formula and y1 the subject of formula, you will get this point. In this video, we'll be calculating for point B, which is x2, y1. Don't forget in the previous video, I gave you the value of B to be 16, minus. 12. But I did not give you the value of P. We calculated the value of P and we got 9,2. So here I have 9,2. I have the ratio 3 to 7. I have point A and I don't have point B. And we have to calculate for point B. point B is equal to 16 comma minus 12. If you know the formula, so let's say we want to apply this formula. This is so what you will do. You don't need to solve. Just look for M. We know this. The ratio is M to N. This is M and this is N. This is X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So using your calculator, just take your calculator, then open brackets. So the first one is m times x2. m is 3. 3 times what is x2? 16. Close the bracket plus open another bracket. n times n1. 
what is n n is seven seven times what is n one n one is six close the bracket and press equal to sign that will give you 90. so and um, the denominator is m plus n and you know m plus n is 10. so 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. then say 90 divided by 10. 90 divided by 10 will give us 9. it means the correct answer is 9. so in less than one minute i was able to make sure my calculator to calculate the value of x here which is 9 instead of using pen and paper to solve for x so, so now let's look at uh, at, at some example under this to explain all these uh, properties so the, for the first example uh we want to find the center the force the directories and the vertices of the of the ellipse the first one okay let me start from b when the major axis is on the uh horizontal we have it to be x square over 25 plus y square over 9 to be equal to 1. So we want to find the force, the, uh, the center, the vertices, and the directories here. So to do that, to do that, I will compare this with what? With the general form which is given as x square. plus or minus a the value of a is five comma comma zero so those are the, requ uh, the required information from the equations of ellis if you look at this general form carefully this is telling us that the ellis has passed through a given point s1 comma what comma y1 which make it to be a standard form now to compare with the uh, to compare this with the general form which if you recall the general form is given as x minus 9 comma 3 so those are the required uh, information you can ask to find any of this either the force the directories the eccentricity or the vertices from the given equations of ellis all right let's solve uh, one more example question three okay question two want to so let's look at the first example in this slide we want to find the eccentricity of the equation example example one so looking at the slide, we want to find the eccentricity of the equation x square over 64 minus y square over 36 to be equal to 1. x square over 64 minus y square over 36 to be equal to to be equal to 1. You can see since what we have here is what is negative. So this is telling us that this equation. as 1.22 you can see the value of the eccentricity is greater than is greater than one so we are very correct 